Military families are so amazing. They have so many strengths and they're so resilient. They're strong, but they have a lot of challenges. The military lifestyle comes with a lot of disruptions. Only predictable thing within the military, I think, is change. The mission calls and we have to go. Our job is to be prepared for war. And it's dangerous. It's hard to seek out that support, especially when our children or we ourselves are going through a struggle. But when we seek out those services and access the support we need to help us, it makes it a lot easier. I have been married to my retired Air Force husband for 36 years, and we have experienced life as a military family. Families may be particularly stressed because of uh, financial strains, and that could be because spouses, they have to move when the military service member moves, and this can cause a disruption to their careers. They sometimes have to find jobs again. And every time you move, there's this big disruption. The mental health struggles are sometimes really hard. We have challenges that other families d don't. We have to seek out supports in every community that we live in, and sometimes those supports are accessible and sometimes they aren't. The unique nature of a military family makes resilience especially important. Military families have learned to adapt and to cope and um, have learned to be resilient. Military culture is close-knit. We live on the base together and we work together in all walks of life join the military. What's unique about the military culture is that uh, they're very self-reliant within the, within the community. Um, it, the Navy support network takes the place of the families that we've all had to leave in order to, to do our military service. Having the security, the feeling that you can reach out and ask people and that, and that they will respond because you've responded in the past to similar requests is very comforting. So sometimes um, if, you know, dad is deployed or dad is TDY, then um, we're going to have to step up in different ways to make up for that uh, the absence of dad. Our daughters, as part of their military life experience, have learned to adjust and go with the flow on a lot of things. That's the most common thing. Um, we never really know what's going to happen next. And so you just have to be flexible and adjust. Military children experience uh, mental health challenges at a higher degree than maybe civilian children because of the constant changes, um, the unpredictability of the life. We have to be willing to drop everything and move. We have to be able to uh, adapt to dad coming home and saying, I'm leaving in a couple of days. And when that happens, military children have to establish new relationships, new friends, adjust to being in different schools. And so sometimes they are more susceptible to feeling depressed or having anxiety, sometimes social anxiety. Children and military families need help and support with the things that they're moving through in their lives. We don't have stable resources. Every time we move, we lose all of the resources that we've built up in that community. So the first thing that we do when we arrive at a new station is we just have to jump in looking for therapists, looking for people who understand what we're going through so that we can connect and feel support. Community supports are important to meeting children's needs and family needs as well. The DOD has many programs like the Exceptional Family Member Program, Family Services aboard the military installations, New Parent Support, and I would encourage families to seek out those services and to make use of them because these are services that are geared to meeting the military families where they are. EFMP, which stands for Exceptional Family Member Program, is a resource within the military that is designed to help families um, with special needs of any sort. So it can include the spouse or the children. It can, have, it can be educational needs, it can be mental health needs, it can be physical health needs. The Exceptional Family Member Program does a good job of screening families um, and overseas capabilities to make sure that you're a match. It ensures that those services exist and then it screens you to see what services you need. Now when I say you, I'm talking about you and your family. 
what services do you need, and where are you being sent and, and to ensure that there's a match. If the uh, duty station cannot meet those needs, then a change will happen, um, whether that be a new duty station, whether that be an adjustment to whether it's an accompanied or unaccompanied tour, uh, or whether they cancel the entire uh, move altogether. Um, but this protects the families so that they're not in a position where there is a need and there's no help. Each child experiences life and challenges and trauma differently. Families experience trauma differently. And so the approach to helping children and their families needs to be individualized. It needs to be unique to their circumstances. It needs to meet that child and their family where they are. Trauma is a response to a challenging circumstance or a challenging event. And each individual responds differently. Children may characterize the trauma in a different way than an adult would. And so it's important to hear how they frame the trauma, how they experience the trauma, and the emotions that they connect with the trauma. Our children have a trauma history, and for us, we found it very helpful to educate ourselves as much as we could to understand their trauma, what works for them, what helps them, what doesn't help them. And then we took that knowledge and we would share it with teachers or any other person that interacted with our children so that they could better understand first how to reach our child but, and how to support our child, but also how not to upset our child. Parents are primary advocates for children who are working through trauma. And part of that advocacy is working with the schools and other community supports to understand the unique circumstances surrounding their child's trauma. There are mental health stigmas within the military, um, for sure. One thing, for example, is within the military members, I think there's a stigma of if you're seeking mental health help, then you're not tough, then you're not strong enough. And I think that can easily filter down to the children. We can serve our country and we can advocate um, exceptionally well, even serving in the military. It's important to have conversations with the entire family unit to allow everyone to express how they're feeling, to allow everyone to express their ideas about how to overcome these challenges. In our family, one of our core values has always been to talk openly and honestly about the things that we're experiencing, both mentally and emotionally. We talk about it and we normalize it when we're struggling. Advocate for yourself and your family. You know what your family needs. You know what your children needs. You know what your active duty member needs. Uh, make sure that other people know that as well. And don't take no for an answer. I found that many times I would be told no and I would search for that exception to policy. I would question things. When families seek services early and have their children to be assessed and begin treatment early, they can find success for their children. Children can overcome trauma and live protective lives. I think that as a military family, one of the greatest things you can do is show some vulnerability when you're struggling to be open about it and talk about it. When you do that, it allows other people to hear you and feel connected to you. It can really lead to some very close and supportive relationships.